a virtual vacation Bible school. We're here on Mystery Island with our good pal Sunny. Hi, Sunny. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but yesterday she pulled a big, big prank on me. A bunch of ping pong balls <laughs> fell on my head. I'm not standing over there today. You can forget it, Sunny. No way. Okay, Miss Tina. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. But before we do, like you did yesterday, pull out the bag that says Tuesday. It has your craft and your snack in it. And then after Sunny and I are finished, the Hinton crew are going to tell the story of Jonah and the whale today. I love that story. Me too. And then after that, we have some awesome teens sharing their faith and what their faith means to, to them. So, all right, we are going to go ahead and get started. Sunny, what are you doing? Oh, um, I'm trying to use my superpower of laser vision. I can step a speeding train with my bare hands, or I can melt the railroad tracks with my laser vision. <laughs> Okay, Sunny, it's fun to pretend, but you don't really think you have those superpowers, do you? No, I don't. But Superman sure does. Have you seen how he can fly through the sky, or he can use his laser vision, or um, he's got super strong strength, Miss Tana? Well, guess what? That's pretend, too. The superheroes <laughs> on TV, in the movies, and on your computer games are just make-believe they're not real. What? Aww. So there's nobody who has superpowers for real? Yes, there is. There is one. Only one. Who? Oh, I bet it's Batman or Aquaman. Nope. Um, maybe Wonder Woman? No, remember, those are just pretend. But the one with the true superpowers is God. God isn't like anyone else. God can do anything. Like what? Well, he knows everything. He never had to go to school to learn anything. What? He knows everything forever. You mean God has never learned anything new? That's right. We're learning new stuff all of our lives. And even then, we only know a little bit of, we only know a bit of what there is to know. But God always has known everything. He knows how many drops of water come to earth. In each rainstorm, he knows where each bird is and how many feathers it has. He knows where an ear of corn is picked on the other side of the world. The Bible says he knows when you sit down and when you get up in the morning. Every day, he knows when you go to bed. He knows what you're going to say before you even say it. He even knew you before you were born because God made you. What, what a mighty God, Miss Tama. Yes, and God not only knows everything, but he has the power to do anything he wants. He's loving and kind, so of course everything he does is for a good reason. Ooh, ooh, what kind of power does he have? He has the power over weather, he has the power to make it rain or stop raining, send a rainbow or make a beautiful sunny day. He has the power to heal, heal boo-boos and sicknesses. He has the power to come back to life. He has the power to forgive us when we sin, and he even has the power to make animals, plants, and people out of nothing. That's incredible! God is also everywhere at the same time. You mean God is here, and then God across the world with boys and girls there too? Yep. The Bible tells us if we go to the highest spot, the lowest spot, the farthest spot across the world or anywhere, God is there. He is even deep, deep down in the ocean where Flip the Flapjack lives, octopus lives. It is pitch black down there, but God knows where every creature is, including Flip. It's really great news that God is always with us. That's something to remember when I get scared and feel alone, right? Remember that you're never alone. You can't see God, but he's there loving you and watching over you. 
God is great, God is good, and God is almighty. Right, Miss Tama? Yes, he is both great and good all the time. If we are his children, we can know he's our kind and loving father who is always with us and knows everything about us. That is so awesome. That's so awesome. I need to go sit in the dark for a minute and remember how to live it. All right, sounds great, Sonny. Um, hey, Miss Kayla, do you remember yesterday when I pulled that really funny prank on you and had you pull that rope? Yes, and that's why I'm not standing over there. Yeah, yeah, that, that should help you today. I'm sure of it. Except, Miss Tama, I prepared a little... the story of Jonah and the big fish. Our Bible account starts with God telling Jonah to go to a place called Nineveh. Let's point over here to Nineveh. Jonah, go to Nineveh. God wanted Jonah to go there because it was a bad city and the people didn't know about the one true God. So Jonah was supposed to go and tell them God's judgment was coming. But Jonah didn't want to go there. I don't want to go to Nineveh. You, hey, you, yeah, go to Tarsus, go to Tarsus. No, go to Nineveh. God said go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh. Go to Tarsus. Go to Nineveh. So Jonah went to Tarshish and got on the boat. They thought the boat might break into pieces because the storm was so bad. They started throwing all the supplies off the ship to lighten the load. During this whole time, guess what Jonah was doing? He was sleeping. The captain went and got him up. Wake up, Jonah! There's a big storm! Yeah, wake up! And told him to call on God. You see, the sailors had figured out the storm had come about because Jonah was trying to get away from God. Jonah knew God had sent the storm because Jonah was trying to run away from God. You can't run away from God. God always knows where you are. So Jonah told him to throw him overboard and then God was the storm. Boys, you're going to have to throw me overboard and God will stop the storm. Come on. Guess what happened to Jonah when he fell on the sea? God sent a big fish to swallow him. Can you imagine being in the belly of a big fish for three days and three nights? That's where Jonah was. Do you think God knew Jonah was there? Yes, God knew. God knows everything at all times. He knows where you are and he's even with each person all the time. So if you're playing hide and go seek, he knows. Oh, I found you! <laughs> or if you're going rollerblading, God knows where you are. It's a nice day today, folks. You should be outside. It's really nice out by Connor Hinton. Yeah. Or if you're going on a walk, God knows where you are. It's a nice day out here. Or if you're checking your soil temperature, God knows where you are. He does. He really does. God knew where Jonah was and God was with him, even though Jonah thought he was dying. But then he prayed to God and God heard his prayer. 
Dear God, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. Please forgive me. God heard that prayer and commanded the big fish to vomit up Jonah onto the shore. God is so powerful that a fish does what he tells it to. God can start and stop a storm. God can cause a fish to swallow Jonah, and God can command it to throw him back up. you share with us on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Today, in our discussion, we're going to talk about God's power over our problems. Yafit, true or false, God can handle every problem I have. True. There's never there's never a problem too big for God. Always he's always got a plan whether it's whether it's the way you exactly plan it. So me being 14 years old, I think that I've had some problems that I that I really really thought I couldn't make it through. And I just kept praying and praying about it. And God, he just came through for me. So I, I would say that he always, always comes through. Mila, how does it make you feel to know that God is with you all the time? It makes me feel safe and secure. And it, I always feel safe. And last but not least, Brooke, can you think of an example of God's power or presence or knowledge? An example of me for God's power is Him putting the friends I need in my life at just the right time, like when I'm going through something hard. Like earlier this year, my best friend wasn't exactly getting along with me, and then God put another friend in my life, and they helped me through that time. 